Before we get into creating triggers, functions, and store procedures, let's talk about the similarities and differences. First, the similarities. All of these are database objects containing code that will be executed as a single unit. These things are similar to what other development platforms might call a method, a subroutine, or a module. Some other platforms also use the term procedure and function, similar to the way SQL Server uses those words. In SQL Server, triggers, functions, and store procedures are typically written in T-SQL, but they can also be implemented in any of the .NET languages, like c -sharp or VB.NET. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences. Triggers and store procedures are allowed to change data and commonly do change data, whereas a function is not allowed to change any data. The point of a function is always to return data. Sometimes it returns a single scalar value. Sometimes it returns a table. Triggers never return data. A trigger has to accomplish all of its work by changing data in tables, and there is no return value from a trigger. Store procedures are somewhere in between. Typically, the point of a store procedure is to change data in the underlying tables, but it is allowed to return a value if it wants to. Commonly returns a 0 or a 1 to indicate success or failure. Probably the biggest difference between the three is how they are called. The easiest to work with is a store procedure. For a store procedure, we just simply execute it directly from code, using the phrase EXEC, or the full word execute, and then the name of the store procedure. This will cause the store procedure to run at that time. We cannot use this technique with the other ones. So a function has to be part of a select statement. So we see here, we have a typical select statement calling first name and last name. But if I wrote a function that combined that into full name, I could just use that in line with the select statement. I can use a function in the column list of a select statement. I can also use it in the where clause. I could also use it in the order by clause of a single select statement. These are all functions that return scalar values. It's also possible for a function to return an entire table, and that would replace the table name here. We're not limited to just select statements. We can also do the same thing with update, insert, and delete statements. So something like this, where we're using a function to filter a delete statement. Calling triggers is yet again a third technique. There is no way for me to issue a command that causes a trigger and just a trigger to run. A trigger always runs as a reaction to something. So I do something else on my machine, the machine performs that action, and then afterwards runs the trigger. Most commonly, triggers react to update, insert, or delete statements. So if I have a trigger set up on a table, and I run an insert statement on that table, immediately after that insert, the trigger will take over and execute its code. There is no way to just type in and say, run this trigger now.